Hey guys, welcome to part three of PHP front to back. In the last video, we set up PHP, Apache, and MySQL using XAMPP. And now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna take a look at some code. So these first couple videos are gonna be really basic stuff. And I'm sure that a lot of you probably already know some of this stuff, um, but I would still suggest that you watch it and just use it as a refresher. All right, um, I have to do it because uh, I want this to be for people that are, that know nothing about PHP as well and I want them to be able to know what's going on so in this video we're going to talk about things like just basic syntax comments um, variables constants and data types we'll also look at concatenation and combining variables as well alright so I'm using sublime text for my editor if you guys want to use that you can if you want to use something else Adam is another one that I use all the time uh, Notepad++ Notepad++ plus plus is, is alright. Um, you could even use just Windows Notepad, but I wouldn't suggest it um, as it doesn't have you know sufficient highlighting or, or anything like that. Um, so what I've done here is in my htdocs folder, which is my web root, I created a folder called PHP Sandbox and that's where we're gonna create our files for this series. So I'm gonna create a new file here and we'll call this variables.php okay we're gonna be looking at things other than variables but that's the main focus so that's what I'm gonna call it alright and then I'm gonna open the project up in sublime just say add folder to project and we're gonna to go to uh, let's see xamp htdocs and then php sandbox okay so let's open up the variables file all right now if I no matter what I write in here I can just say hello and save it and then if we go to HTTP localhost slash uh, PHP sandbox slash variables dot PHP and we get hello okay I'm gonna make this bigger so it's a PHP file but we can just as well put whatever we want in here we can put plain text we can put HTML so if I wrap this in h1 tags, it should still parse. I'll get rid of that. Okay, so you can see that it does parse the HTML. Okay, um, now if we want to write PHP, we have to surround it in PHP tags. Okay, now some developers will uh, leave out the ending PHP tag as long as there's no HTML or anything down here and it's not going to cause a problem. Um, sometimes it's even recommended to do that. So it's your, it's your preference if you want to um, keep it or not. Okay, so we're going to take a look at echo, which basically just prints stuff out on the screen. So if we say echo hello world and reload, we're going to get hello world. Okay, and we could just as well wrap this in an H1 if we want. Okay, we can mix and match PHP with HTML as long as the PHP is wrapped in tags. All right, I'm just going to get rid of that. Now, another command that does the same thing really is print. Okay, if we reload that. Um, now, print, the, the main difference is that echo doesn't return a value. Print will actually return one, so you can use it within expressions. Um, but echo is a little bit faster than print, and that's normally what you would use. That's what you see. Okay, so we're going to stick with echo. Um, so let's talk about comments. Okay, every programming language has comment syntax. So there's basically three ways to do it in PHP. If we want to do a single line comment, we can do the double forward slash. Okay, we can also do the number sign. And you'll see if I go on another line, it's not a comment anymore. Now if you want to do multi-line comments, you can use the same syntax that CSS uses which is the, the slash and then the star and then star slash. So this would be a multi-line, we'll say multi-line comment. Okay, so that's the comment syntax. So let's take a look at variables. So let's create a variable called output and we'll just set that to hello world and let's echo it out here. Okay, so a variable is basically just a container. So if we save that and reload, we get our hello world. Okay, very simple. Now I want to go over the different um, 
the different rules of variables in PHP. All right, I'm just going to put a comment here. Okay, so first rule is you have to uh, prefix with the dollar sign in PHP. Okay, you have to do that, or it's going to be looked at as a constant, and you're going to—it's not—it's not, not going to work out for you. So make sure that you use the dollar sign, um, and then the variable itself has to start with a letter or an underscore. Okay, an underscore is the only character aside from numbers and letters that you can have, and you can start a variable with it. Okay, but you can't start it with a number. So, like I said, only letters, oops, uh, letters, numbers, and underscores. Okay, and they're also case sensitive. So, if we try to start this with a one, like that, and we reload, we're going to get a parsing error. Okay, and there's different types of errors in PHP, and we'll get into that later on. Okay, if I try to start it with an underscore, let's see what happens. Okay, so that works, okay, because you can start it with an underscore. Now they're case sensitive, so if we if we say output with an uppercase O here, and we leave that one lowercase, we're gonna get an undefined variable error. Okay, so make sure that you have the right case in your variables. So there's different data types in PHP as with most programming languages. So let's go over those data types. Okay, so we have strings, which is this here. Okay, so strings can be wrapped or have to be wrapped in quotes and they can be either single quotes or double quotes. All right, and I'll go over the difference in a minute. We can also have integers. Integers are numbers which can be positive or negative. So for instance, if we say, uh, let's create a variable called num1 and set it to four. Okay, notice that I didn't put quotes around it because integers do not have quotes. If you put quotes around it, it's gonna be looked at as a string. Okay, we also have floats, which are decimals. So let's say, uh, float one and we'll set it to 4.4 okay simple float uh, we also have booleans booleans is a true or false so we could say bool one equals true we also have arrays now I'm not going to get into arrays or objects just yet uh, we will go over those later on and then we also have null and then we also have a resource, which could be, for instance, a, a return uh, or a reference to a function or something like that. Okay, it's not an actual data type. Um, so let's now talk about uh, combining variables, concatenation, and uh, using arithmetic. So we have this num1 here. Let's say we want to say num2, and we'll set that to 10, and we can actually add these together if we say num1 plus num2 and let's set that to a variable called sum okay and then let's echo out sum okay so if we reload that we get 14 and you can use obviously multiplication division subtraction whatever you want um, now let's say we want to take two strings and put them together. So if we say string one equals hello and string two equals world and then let's say we want a variable called greeting and we set that to string one plus string two. Okay, let's see what that gives us if we try and echo out greeting. Okay, so that's giving us an error telling us that um, it's a non-numeric value and we're trying to add it. Now there's a few things we could do here to get the result we want, which is hello world. Um, one is to use concatenation. Now when you concatenate two strings together, you want to use a dot. Okay, 
In JavaScript, you would use a plus sign, so that would actually work. But in PHP, you use a dot. So if we reload that, we get hello world. Now, if we want to put a space in between, which you probably do, you would have to then concatenate an S string with an empty character, basically a space. So to do that, in the middle here, it's going to be a string which needs quotes, and then we're just going to put a space. Okay, so we're concatenating these strings. So if we reload, now we get that space. If we want to put an exclamation mark on the on the back here, we'll again concatenate to a string, and we'll put in our exclamation. Reload, and now it works. Now there's an easier way to do this, and that's by using double quotes. Okay, so let's do greeting, we'll say greeting to equals, and let me first show you what happens if we do it with single quotes. So if we just do greet, uh, not greet, string one, space, string two, and then we want to echo out greeting two, oops, I need to save it. it. It actually looks at these as strings, okay, so single quotes will give you exactly what you put in. It's not going to parse the variables. However, if you put double quotes and we reload, we get hello world. Okay, so the double quotes will actually parse the variable. Um, now, even though looking at this, this is a much easier thing to do than this, but you need to know how to do this as well, how to concatenate. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is escape sequences. So sometimes we want to take away the special meaning that PHP gives a certain character. And to do that, we can escape it. So let me give you an example. So if we say string three equals, and let's say we want to say they're here. So we would do they uh, and use a single quote here and then RE. Okay, now you can tell right off the bit, oh, I forgot the ending quote. You can tell that something is, is not right here. And the reason for that is that PHP doesn't understand that we want this whole thing to be one string because it sees this, this quote here, so it's, it's stopping the string there. All right, now for this to actually work, well, first of all, let's try and run it. Okay, if we try and, whoops, that's string three. If we try and run it, we're gonna get an error, okay? Um, now what we can do is we can escape this character. We can make it basically lose its its meaning, its power by putting a backslash in front of it. Okay, so now it's just looking at this as just another character in the string. So let's save that and reload, and now we get there here. Now you only need to escape it if this is going to match this. Okay, if we were to wrap this in double quotes like that then we actually don't need to do that. Okay, if we reload, we get the same thing. However, if this was a, a double quote, then we do have to escape it. Reload, and now that works. And I think that's good for the basics of variables. If you guys have any other questions, uh, you can leave it in the comments. And I realize that I, I can't get to everyone's question. Um, so if there's other people that know the answer, um, please don't hesitate to help them out as well. Okay, um, so now what I want to look at before we go is constants. Variables are just that, they're variable, they can change. Constants, however, you want to use for values that you absolutely know aren't going to change. Uh, an example, I guess, would be like your server name or something like that. That's most likely not going to change. So you could use a constant. So let's go ahead and create a constant. Now to create it, you need to use the define function. So we would say define and constants are a popular practice is to give them all uppercase. So if we say greeting and then the second parameter will be what we want it to be. Let's say hello everyone. Okay. And then down here if we want to output that we can just say echo greeting. Let's save it, reload and we get hello everyone. Okay. So you should only use this if you know that this string right here is never going to change. Now, if we were to make this lowercase and reload, we're going to get an error saying it's undefined uh, because by default, constants are case sensitive. If you want to make this case insensitive, you can by just adding a third parameter of true. So if we save that and reload, that's going to work. Okay. Um, that's about 
all there is to constants, um, at least at this point. Just remember, only use them if you know that that value isn't going to change. All right, so I think that's it, guys. I don't want to make this too long. Hopefully, that gives you a good explanation of just you know basic syntax, comments, variables, data types. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at arrays, and we're also going to look at loops. Okay, so that's it, and I will see you in the next video.